All right, here we go. It's time to do this full in-depth review comparison against the Series 4 Apple Watch against the Series 5, which I have both on my wrist. And yes, it was really odd and difficult, somewhat challenging to place the Series 4 on my right hand wrist because I'm right handed. What we're gonna go ahead and do is not just do a performance test to see if there's a performance gain from the last generation to the new generation series Apple Watch. We're also gonna check out the display and talk about the overall battery life. So the two models that we have here are both the Space Gray aluminum model Apple Watch. Just the Series 4, however, happens to be the Nike Plus Edition. With the Nike Plus Edition, all you really get is just some exclusive Nike Plus watch faces and some exclusive color customization options to choose from. And yes, there will be a Nike Plus Edition available for the Series 5, which comes out on October 4th. But externally, the Nike Plus Edition is identical to the standard Apple Watch Sport. Both do start at the same MSRP retail price, and these two models do come available in both the 42 and the 44 millimeter. The ones you see here are both the 44 millimeter size option. So options to choose from, the Series 4 only came available in both the aluminum body and a stainless steel option. The Series 5 gives us two new additional materials. The Series 5 gives you the option to not just choose from the aluminum body or the stainless steel, but we now have a new titanium body option as well as a ceramic one. So both of these Apple Watches that we will be comparing for the performance tests are indeed on the same watch os so these are both running the latest watch os 6 and both of these apple watches for a fair comparison were both unpaired and set up as a new apple watch because that was something that i realized from the previous video i made comparing these two because if you watch that last video right when i finished unboxing the series 5 apple watch i immediately did a boot up speed test to see if there's a noticeable performance difference between the older generation series Apple Watch against the latest series 5 and it was a minute slower. The series 4 I believe was a minute slower because it had more applications to load up as well as it also had to load and connect to my iPhone. While the series 5 had none of that because when it was loading up there was no need to load third party applications or connect to an iPhone. But now since both of these Apple watches are identical in software application installation wise so testing the boot up time between the two Apple watches I made sure both of these Apple Watches were connected to the same USB power adapter on the same surge protector and each were placed on their own individual Apple Watch charger and I made sure each Apple Watch was properly turned off as well as I turned off the surge protector. And so as soon as I turn on the surge protector I'm going to begin the timer and the Apple Watches should automatically power on once they receive power. And I went ahead and performed three tests to see if there's an average result and there actually was. The Series 5 is using the new S5 chip and throughout all three tests, the Series 5 was always a second or two quicker. And do keep in mind, before performing this test, I made sure my iPhone was actually on airplane mode with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi disabled. So the Apple Watch only had to connect to Wi-Fi. So from all these three tests, it was very consistent. That new S5 chipset inside the Series 5 isn't as powerful compared to the Series 4 S4 chip. Yes, although the Series 5 did came in first each and every time, but again, it was just one or two seconds apart. Interesting thing, when I was performing this test, I noticed that the USB cable, the USB-A port that came with the Series 5 was much larger and bigger compared to the Series 4 that cable that it came with. I just thought this was really interesting that Apple changed the cable once again. Now moving on, performing other performance tasks. This time, launching applications to see which Apple Watch launches applications the quickest. So making sure each and every application was forcefully shut off so there's no RAM memory cache or anything before we go ahead and test out the speed comparison. Launching each and every single app side by side, starting from alphabetical order. The performance was identical again. Both the Series 4 and the 5 launched each application very quick. And even moving on and launching something that takes a little bit longer, the camera application, both launched incredibly quick. So that new S5 chipset found inside the new Series 5 performs just as well like the previous generation S4 chipset. Apple labeled both of these to have a dual core 64-bit processor and from the test that we performed, I mean, they look and perform identical. Just however, as something to quickly note, yes, the Series 5 does have double the storage capacity now. Now it comes default with 32 gigabytes, while the Series 4 only came included with 16 gigabytes. There's no change for the LTE cellular versions, as both do offer a cellular version, but no major improvement or mention of faster LTE for the Series 5. 
but the two Apple Watches that we've been testing out have just been the GPS version. So weight wise, Bose weigh exactly the same, about 36 grams without having any Apple Watch bands attached to them, and both still use the same Bluetooth 5.0. The recycled aluminum that's used on the Series 5 Apple Watch does give it a darker shade of gray. Nothing has changed between the two screens. They still have the new generation Apple Watch look with that gorgeous 60% body to screen ratio. So both the Series 5 and the Series 4 have the same 1.78 inch display, which means they both have the resolution of 448 by 368 pixels, with a PPI density of 326. In other words, the image, the text size, these screens look sharp. And even in a very bright sunny day in direct sunlight, both screens are very visible, with very minimum glare. But however, unlike the new generation iPhones like the iPhone 11 Pro, the Series 5 didn't get an enhanced wire resistant rating. They both are indeed waterproof up to 50 meters, which was the same wire resistant rating that was given on the Series 4. And with the Series 5, since it has that always on display, indirect sunlight, I mean it's slightly harder to read than if the Apple Watch was actually awake. But switching to a low brightness prevents the battery life from draining a lot quicker. But underneath the shade or inside a room, there's no visibility issues whatsoever. So after performing a side by side comparison when it comes to downloading applications, both of them download it at the same speed. So while both of them are connected to the same Wi-Fi network, this shows us that there's no new technology in the Series 5 Wi-Fi. It's using the same Wi-Fi tech that was found on the Series 4, not the Wi-Fi 6 that's on the new iPhones. Other tests I wanted to check out was to see if there actually was like a sound improvement when it comes to speaker quality, in case you know you have to answer an incoming call. Speaker-wise, between these two Apple Watches, when it came down to its loudness at max volume, they were identical. Just however, on the Series 5, I want to say that for some reason the speaker sounds slightly better when it comes to overall quality. Because I was playing the same voice memo file that I had synced or nice on my iCloud account on both of these Apple Watches, and that audio clip sounded a lot better on the Series 5 for some reason. But something interesting that came in mind, after watching Jerry Rig Everything, he did a teardown video on the iPhone 11 Pro. When he was tearing it apart, the speaker on that iPhone 11 Pro had a lot of tiny little balls and these little foam type material balls allowed the speaker quality to be more enhanced. I'm starting to think that the Series 5 might also have these little balls inside the speaker because the speaker quality doesn't sound like your typical cell phone speaker where it's just really loud and obnoxious like the Series 4 did. The Series 5 actually had a little bit more quality to the sound if that makes sense. Here's a little sound sample so you could also take a listen. So when it comes to the overall battery life, I did a ton of testing which is why this video took a little bit longer to make. Because Apple left it so there's no way you can actually leave these Apple watches on idle on a flat surface with their displays consistently turned on. The only way you could test battery life is by actually wearing them. So instead of torturing myself by standing still for two days straight, I'm just gonna give you my overall experience when it came to the Series 5 overall battery life. Between these two Apple watches, on my Series 4, I always use the Infograph watch face. And when I continue using that watch face on my Series 5, from equipping it on my wrist around 7 a.m., that's when it has a full charge. But around almost 6 o'clock, like 5.51, I noticed that the battery life was at 31%, which was really weird because on my Series 4, if I recall, it's usually around 31% around 1 a.m. from a full charge at the same time like around 7 a.m. when I'm already wearing the Apple Watch from a full charge. So I've been experimenting with different watch faces. I switched the watch face from the Infograph to the Meridium watch face and right now it's currently 551, the same time when it was actually at 31% last time and right now it's currently at 67%. So it all varies on the watch face you select. If you select a watch face that has a lot of colors, a lot of complications, then yes, the Series 5 is gonna use up more energy. But I think if you go into the settings and disable the always on display, you should be able to get the exact same battery life percentage from the Series 4. Just it's not something that I would ever like to do or recommend others to do because the whole point to owning the Series 5 
is that always on display feature. Disabling that, I mean, you kind of ruin the entire purpose. On the primary reason what separates the Series 5 from the Series 4. I hope you catch my drift. But for the most consistent battery life, I still think the Series 4 has the advantage because that one's guaranteed to give you a consistent higher battery life under a single charge no matter what watch face you select. Because honestly, with my Series 4, I think the longest I gone through a single charge was up to 30 hours. Again, no testing was done on this because testing the battery life between these two watches is impossible unless you plan on standing still for a few days, which I don't think anybody will ever do. So when it comes to all day battery, both of these Apple Watch can definitely achieve more than 18 hours, which is plenty enough to make it through any day. And honestly, anybody that owns an Apple Watch at the end of the day, or even any smartwatch, you typically charge these overnight like your smartphone. So there's no battery issues whatsoever, but really it all depends on which watch face you typically use. So the less complications, the better. But overall, I mean like besides the always on display hardware that's exclusive on the Series 5, which means the Series 4 or older Apple Watches, no, there's not going to be a over the air update that allows those older models to also get this always on display. It will be nice, but what primarily separates the Series 4 from the Series 5 is just that hardware that's physically internally inside the series 5 to get that always on display feature other exclusives is the compass which uh i mean it can be useful especially if you're hiking most of the time but most common people I, that i know even myself included when i go hiking i follow trails so having a compass isn't really that useful especially since you also have a compass on your phone and in your vehicle so it all depends on the person but it's a cool tool that's included with the series 5. but other than that that's basically it Performance, as you guys saw, I mean, they're almost identical, maybe just a second or two faster, really, on average. So if you were to personally ask me from somebody that owns the Series 4, is the S5 worth upgrading? My answer would honestly be no. I really don't see a reason why you should upgrade from the Series 4 to the Series 5. But if you're somebody upgrading from a Series 3 or older, by all means, yes, now would be actually a good time to actually upgrade to the latest Series Apple Watch. It's listed at the same price compared to the previous Series 4, and you get a lot of its cool features like ECG and fall detection, or ECK, depending on the region you live in. But that's just my summary. I'm not here to tell you what to buy or what not to buy. That's for you to decide. I just know there's gonna be some people who would love to also hear a secondhand opinion. So honestly, if it wasn't for this YouTube channel, I would have been just fine with my Series 4 Apple Watch. So if you're on an Apple Watch and you have the latest firmware, Watch OS 6, check out this video over here. I go through all my favorite tips and trick features that's on Watch OS 6. If you want to learn something new, definitely do check out that video. And this video over here, that is a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. They think you're going to like it. Go ahead and click on it. Check it out. Comment down below and let me know if YouTube was right. But thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.